and their unselfish dedication to uphold the dignity of human life. We received permission from the Mother House in Calcutta to name this award the Mother Teresa Award, and it is my great pleasure to present, this, uh, to present the award this evening for 2012. The recipient this year is a very special lady. For many years, she has been a sidewalk counselor outside an abortuary, and she continues this faithfully in spite of a so-called temporary injunction to stop. This injunction has been in place for 18 years, and during this time, she has been arrested 20 times and sent to jail for a cumulative period of about nine years for, as she said, I have a moral responsibility not to obey an unjust law. As she stands in her familiar place, she carries the sign showing the face of a baby with the message, why mom, when I have so much love to give. In spite of being removed from outside the abortion, her life affirming work continues even whilst in jail. She ministers to women there who are pregnant and is a light in the darkness to them, praying and leading Bible studies with them. We will never know just how many babies have been saved from the tragic act of abortion as a result of her constant vigil and how many mothers have been saved from the trauma that is abortion but I know that there are many, and the good Lord knows every one. She has said, neither force of police nor fraud of courts will persuade us to break faith with them. Rather than allow intimidation to ambush our witness to life, we make the courts a platform for his truth. This special lady is an awesome example of pro-life witness, of courage, of perseverance, and especially of faith and humility. She is deserving of our admiration and respect, as well as our gratitude that she is part of our pro-life family. A well-deserved acknowledgement was given to her this past week when she received the Diamond Jubilee Medal from the Governor of Canada. in recognition of her contribution to Canada. Joining her in this honour was that other valiant witness to life, Mary Wagner. These words, spoken by Archbishop Chapu of the US, could have been written especially for this lady. Nothing we do to defend the human person, no matter how small, is ever unfruitful or forgotten. Our actions touch other lives and move other hearts in ways we can never fully understand in this world. Don't ever underestimate the beauty and power of the witness you give in your pro-life work. We are so grateful that she is actually here with us this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a huge pro-life welcome as with pleasure I present the 2012 Life Canada Mother Teresa Award to Linda Gibbon.
stand before you as one person that has chosen a certain walk, but there's others in this room. There's Rosemary Powell. Where are you, Rosemary? These are two people that found that they can tolerate jail for me. So they have walked with me during my mission to the unborn. But you know, if I would ask any of you how you got involved with pro life, I'm sure you could name two or three significant people that got you charted on course. And we know that it's the Lord's work. And we know that we're not here for ourselves, that the children and our focus on the unborn is what drives us. And more than that, we believe, and I'm sure all of us here feel that, that this is the Lord's work, that he is the strength that we move in. And it's to him we look to deliver his children. And I think of this Mother Teresa Award, and it makes me think there's some people here that have maybe been in pro-life maybe nearly longer than I've been alive. And you really look at their perseverance. And it's not because pro-life is easy. Pro-life can be very difficult, very challenging, always demanding that we give that little bit more, we go that extra mile. Because we want to show that our love is genuine. I think of Joan Andrew. She's someone that really inspired me. And I was at a church where there was a video showing on Catholicism recently by Father Barron. And in it, he had a little antidote of Sister, uh, Mother Teresa that I'd never heard before. And he was talking about Mother Teresa had been walking down the street, met a baker, had a little child with her, and said to the baker, please, some bread for the child. And the baker spit in her face. And Mother Teresa, without flinching, <coughs> said, thank you for that gift. And now, please, something for the child. And for me, that, it says so much about what we do, that the troubles we face, the challenges that we do, we do not cringe or move back from it, but we face it as an opportunity given us by God to say to the government, to say to our neighbors, to say to those we know, now something for the child. And this award being given me, I'm talking about the Diamond Jubilee Award, this week, it, there's a bit of irony there. Some, one had written in the Ottawa newspaper that it's sort of hard to toast champagne when you're in handcuffs, like Mary Wagner right now remains in prison. But she is there to stand up for her convictions. She believes that at the abortion clinics, we need to be free in our love and if we will allow bad laws to determine our behavior, then we're no longer free. And when we say, I won't count the cost, God is challenging me to step out in faith and let him lead and show our love to unborn children that are about to be, about to be murdered. And I think of Joan Andrews, she wrote a book, and, I, and I, maybe, I should, maybe I don't have to explain who Joan Andrews is. She's a lady that unplugged an abortion machine early in the morning before Noah was in the office. And of course that depressurized it, so it takes hours to pressurize, so all that morning no abortions were being done. And she wrote a book called You Reject Them, You Reject Me. And I always found that really, uh, it resonated with me, that in the unborn suffering, when we go to pains for them, we actually move closer to them. So tonight we're celebrating the work 
that continues on and perseveres. And we know it's not cake and ice cream, that it's a lot of hard, hard work. And I think I would say about us coming together in the joy of serving the unborn children, they're our focus. I would say about receiving this Mother Teresa Award, I would say, you embrace them, you embrace me. So I thank you for being here. I thank you for this honor. And I thank you for your dedication, your undying love for the children. That as you are spending yourself for the children, that we are calling our government to terms. And I look at the defunct abortion rally, I look at life shame, I look at Rosemary Connell's show the truth. We are making our case, and our government, our educators, uh, the health system, remember abortion is no kind of medicine. You put a white coat on the doctor, a man that does not make him a practicing medical professional. He is a killer dressed up, mimicking a medical establishment that was devoted to healing and to do no harm and to restore life. So this medal for me is something that we all share in our work, our love for the unborn, our love for God. And so again, my heartfelt thanks for all you continue to do for our unborn friends. And uh, I salute each one here for their labors and tell them, continue, 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 expose, expose, expose. I would like to just finish off by a little note. Mary Wagner, who was mentioned tonight, currently is in prison. She's been there two and a half months. She has a very good lawyer, Charles Lugosi. He's a constitutional lawyer, and he's going to be arguing personhood at her trial. And the legal profession is sort of scowling at that, saying, well, but you're not going to get too far. But the trial is scheduled to probably be five days. And again, very much like the Borowski trial, it's an opportunity to bring a case for the unborn into the courts if they're going to use the courts to drive us away from the abortion clinic, then we will lay out our pro-life <coughs> trenches all the way to the courts. That we will not flinch from um, making our case and bringing social and society to terms with what's happening in our land, what's happening to the babies, what it does to families, the previous speaker spoke eloquently to all of those. Um, Mary Wagner, in prison, likes mail. Today she phoned me, and remember, what does your mail do? There's no jail big enough, there's no walls high enough to stop your mail from coming to Mary. And there we have solidarity. The problem that Mary told me about today is, People are writing her, and on the computer it tells you, do not use mail labels, do not send anything plasticized, do not send anything with staples, do not send anything more than three or four pages. She likes Bible tracts, she likes little cards of unborn babies, and she's saying, Linda, my mail's coming in, it has these mail labels on, that guards read our mail, before we get it, they tear off the piece of the envelope with the mail label on because they're not allowed in the jail. And she says, Linda, I get mail. She said today she got it from a youth group way out west. And she says, Linda, I'm so disappointed. I wanted to answer them and I don't have. So I said, I would get the word out that when you write a letter, please write your full address by hand and do not use mail envelopes, do not put pro-life stickers or Christmas seals, all that will return her mail. And when she gets the mail, I tell people, please 
right inside in your letter. Write your address again. So in case the envelope got removed for whatever reason, she would have an address to reply to. And both Mary and I do try to reply to every letter we get. A number of people tonight signed the card I had for Mary, but it was so full because there's so many wonderful pro lifers here. If you're interested in a little note for Mary, I have a little notepad. And if someone wants to come and just make out a little note, whatever, the rest of the evening, I will include those with the card that is already full of little notes. And again, thank you for writing, thank you for caring, but above all, thank you for loving the end one. God bless you.